It's a big anniversary today. It was five years ago today. Two U.S. stock market indexes reached all-time highs. But we know what followed that. CBS Money Watch.com's Jill Schlesinger is more on that and what you could do now to take control of your investment. So let's talk about it. Of course, we had those all-time highs, but then everybody remembers the terrible crash that yeah, followed. It's been a wild five years. Look, it's like yesterday we saw the Dow closing at 13,583. You know what, guys? We're only 4% below our all-time high, 14,000. 164 five years ago today s p 500 yesterday we closed at 1455 still seven and a half percent below the october 2007 close of 1565 but you know hey we're getting close you know where we're not so close the nasdaq if you recall gang the nasdaq reached a high of over 5,000 back in 2000 we're now 60 percent below that and we are 11 percent above where we were for the nasdaq five years ago but we got a long way to go. 12 years, and we are still not even back to that level. Well, here's the conundrum, though. What do you want to do? I mean, you don't want to get in now. It's so high again, right? So well, that just depends. You know what? Look, stock market's up about 15% this year. It's amazing. So here's one really good tip. How about rebalancing your accounts? You want to make sure that the amount you have in each asset, whether it's stocks or bonds or cash, reflects what your risk tolerance is. I know you hate that term, risk tolerance, just how much you can stomach. Now, Rob, you bring up a great point. If you bailed out of stocks at some point over the past five years, you've got to be really careful not to jump in all at once. You Say you decide, oh, my, I really do want to be more of an investor. Choose a fixed percentage of your account that will put you back into stocks until you reach your desired allocation. You know, maybe 10% a month for five months. Get there, okay? But here's the thing. Once you do it, stick to your plan. Otherwise, you're going to repeat that cycle of selling low and buying high. We want to help you avoid those costly mistakes. On MoneyWatch.com, I came up with, ready for this, seven common financial blunders. These are seven of my favorites that I have seen over the last 25 years that we all do. All right, so give let's, us a hand. What's yeah, one of them? You know what one of the big ones is? Is we seem to pick funds that put us at a disadvantage. So we pick these really expensive funds so that every year we start the year down two or three percent. That's just silly. Why not pick a cheap no load index fund it saves you so much and it really is an easy thing to change in your portfolio but the other ones come with those fancy folders and things. you like those folders <laughs> don't you i mean if you really want them yeah. we can give i'll give you a folder and a much easier perspective <laughs> to read how about sure. that good thank trade thank you so much